Good. Can I be right? Hi guys, thank you for coming. I'm Ryan <clears throat> Mullen, and this will be my senior project. My essential question is, what are the steps needed to successfully create a garden to donate to the produce to the mills through the pantry? These are different pictures during the spring and summer. This one right here is at the start of the spring. That one on the far left is during the middle of the summer, and right here is one of my harvests that I donate to the Mills Food Pantry. My project consisted of many different steps because I didn't know all of the unknowns in my project, and during the start, my garden was just all grass. I had no soil, so it took a really long time for me to get it all going. The different parts of my project are why I chose this project, prepping the soil, choosing my mentors, planting the crops, raising chickens, which is a really difficult time period for me, building a chicken coop, harvesting, prepping for next year. Why I chose this project? My inspiration came from the movie, The Biggest Little Farm. This was a documentary about a family that owned a farm and they started it from the ground up. My mentor, Jen McPhee, actually gave me this movie and it kind of started my whole idea with my senior project. My second reason is I kind of have a green thumb. I've always loved the outdoors and spending my time outside. So it kind of gave me a chance to really tap into my creative side with this. And I wanted to have my project contribute to the community in a way that felt special to me and I thought I was able to do that. What I hope to achieve from this project was I hope to learn a lot more about gardening. I wanted to make a change in the community and throughout my hard work, I was able to donate a lot of produce. These are two different times where I was harvesting crops. On the left, I was harvesting my first potatoes, and that was in May. So I ended up planting those in December, and I was putting hay on them during the winter time so they would grow throughout the winter. Here is when I came back from a vacation in Maine, and all of my cucumbers were ready to go, so I just picked all of those right when I got home. My timeline for this project was I started prepping my soil in the spring of 2021. So that was during my junior year of COVID. So I had a lot of free time on Zoom and I ended up going outside a lot and I would just kind of garden the whole entire time. I planted all my crops in the spring and summer of 2021 as well. On the far left, I was putting down cardboard and leaves over my garden to have the microorganisms eat up the grass, which would turn that into soil. In the middle was when me and my friends added all the soil onto the now dirt, which was really tough and hard work, which took a lot of time. And finally, here was when I planted my first row of broccoli, and that was about early May. And that was kind of a tricky situation because I didn't know if the frost was still going to come in or not, so it was kind of a gamble that paid off. For my gardening background, I went to Tangerine's camp as a child, so I started going there when I was about six, and I went there for five years and I ended up working there. I came really close with Laura Tangerini, and she taught me a lot of different techniques about gardening, and that kind of started it all. And I first started gardening in 2011. I was about seven at the time, and that was my first garden. I was trying to plant pumpkins that would never grow, so four years later, I finally got my first real garden going. My mentors were Jen McPhee and Miss Rooney. Jen McPhee owns Harrison McPhee with her husband, Scott McPhee, and I've been best friends with her son since I've been a little kid. She taught me a lot about soil techniques and nutrients, which played a crucial role into the success of my crops. She taught me about fertilizing, and one method was compost tea, which is when you infuse uh, cow manure in the water, and then you spray it over your soil, which will then add nutrients. Her and I also spoke a lot about burn piles, which is when you light piles of leaves on fire, you take those ashes and embers and sprinkle them over the garden, because the nitrogen will soak into the dirt, which is really useful as well. Miss Rooney is one of the teachers at the school, and she owns chickens and pigs, and when I first got my chicken, she was the one that kind of gave me all the guidance and advice I needed. Because my chickens ended up having some medical problems and some of them were killed. So she would end up coming over and we would help administer medicine to the chickens, which was kind of a nasty time period. <laughs> For my approval, it was kind of easy. Mr. Caulfield helped set me up at the Miller's Food Pantry. I ended up not needing to send a lot of emails, but me and the owner of the food pantry ended up having a meeting together. 
And she explained to me all of the rules and regulations that I would need to bring protocin, since that wasn't really a common thing. Since most of the food there is canned, I would only have to bring a certain amount in, and then if anything wasn't used on that Sunday, it would have to be thrown away. But luckily, all of the produce was always taken. During my project, I had to find a lot of new techniques since I had such a large plot of land. On the far <coughs> left, I was using seven-foot stakes, which my taller friends would have to put in the ground for me since it's kind of short. And uh, they would have to tie up the crop so they wouldn't fall over. And plenty of times they did. And the middle was, that was early spring, and I was putting down cardboard, which was just a terrible sight. My mom didn't like it at all. It looked terrible, and I'd have to water the cardboard every day so it didn't blow away. And then up in the top right was my first batch of chickens, and I had a terrible problem where some foxes got into the coop and ate all of my chickens, so I had to find a solution to the problems that, that arose from that situation. I learned a lot from my failures that occurred, which I guess was a good thing, because this year I now know a lot of different techniques. Overall, I donated a ton of produce, and these are a couple of the different times I was harvesting. In the end, I donated 76 vegetables to the Mills Food Pantry. Some of those were bundles of green beans or raspberries or cherry tomatoes, but it took a lot of time and effort to pick all those crops by hand. And my brother would try to help me, but he would usually just rip the plant up all together, so he wasn't allowed to do that anymore. <laughs> My project now is starting to begin again. This was actually yesterday. My dad and my brother were helping me whip, rip up some weeds and we were planting some new crops again. I still need to put the fence up and add some more cow manure, but it's slowly starting to occur again, which I'm really excited about. I think by next week, all of the seeds will be planted again. I had a lot of success during my project. I was able to donate as much produce as I was able to, and I learned it variety of different techniques, which I didn't think would honestly happen since I thought I knew a lot about gardening already, which was an exciting new thing to learn about. On the far left, I started to add tiles into my garden so I could walk throughout the garden and not step on crops since there were so many different areas of food. In the middle is a zucchini plant that I was that was starting to produce zucchinis that I was going to pick, and I ended up having about 20 zucchinis that were produced as well. On the right is my garden in full bloom. That was mid-July. That was a really exciting time period for me because I had never seen my garden be so prosperous, which was really exciting. I had a lot of failures as well. The weather was a really big struggle for me. We had one of the rainiest seasons that we've had in, well, I don't even know how long, so a lot of my crops were dying. And I had a sprinkler system set up, so I would sometimes water in the morning not realizing it would rain and then it would rain for hours and all of my crops would die in the beginning. So that was a, a learning curve for me. The wind was a strong problem as well, and I had corn, I had about seven rows of corn, and all of that corn was blown over during the middle of July. So I ripped that all up and started to plant new crops that would grow quicker so I could donate more produce. That's my friend Braden, and we had just built the first chicken coop and added the fencing in. And we put the chickens in that day, and the next day they were all gone. And that was a really tough, tough time for me. I wasn't expecting that, and we ended up just getting more chickens, and now they're doing really well. What I learned from this project? I learned how important patience is, because I've never been a super patient person, and when you're gardening, you have to take your time and really wait for the crops to develop. And sometimes that means waiting five days for the seeds to even sprout. I learned how important environmentally friendly gardening is by talking with Jen. Jen explained to me how one garden takes in so much carbon from the atmosphere and holds it in the soil that it will actually cool the earth a little bit by each garden, and that if every family in Millis did that, we would be having a great impact on the environment. I also got really big into composting, so I take all my family food scraps, which is really nice. I want to say thank you to both my mentors, Jen and Ms. Rooney, for taking all the time and effort into speaking with me and guiding me. I want to thank my family, especially my mom, for letting me rip up her whole backyard and turn it into a garden. <laughs> I want to thank Mr. Coffin and the food pantry for helping set up with the food pantry. And I want to thank my friends for helping me lug all that dirt and cow manure around my backyard. <laughs> Here's my work cited. 
questions.